All right, so we are going to review how to draw more complex shapes or forms in one point perspective. So to begin, I'll start with my horizon line. Keep in mind if you are doing kind of an interior room, you're not going to have this horizon line. If you're doing anything that's exterior, like a landscape, um, cityscape, anything like that, you will have a horizon line. So just keep that in mind. And then we will also have our little teeny tiny vanishing point. I'm going to make mine just a little bit bigger so it is easier to see. And you'll notice that as you kind of rotate these shapes around the horizon line, you'll start to see different sides of them. Okay, so since we're drawing our square here on the left side of the picture plane, we're going to see the right side of our square. And the picture plane is just the plane, essentially, that we're drawing on, so the, the sheet of paper. Okay, so again, I've connected all four of my corners of that square. And then I want to define where the back line is going to go, right about there. And then from that intersection, so this corner, I'm going to draw my vertical line to meet that projection line. And then I will go from that corner across. And then I will drag that line down to complete our box. Okay, So this is a great way to kind of think of this as like a see-through or transparent shape. So imagine it's maybe like a glass box or something like that so we can see all the sides of the shape. You can do some that are maybe opaque so they're not see-through. Um, and depending on what object you're drawing, uh, that can help with you know drawing less projection lines. So just kind of keep that in mind. All right, so this would be just an opaque cube versus a transparent one. Okay, so that's our cubes. Um, we're gonna do pyramids, cones, and cylinders today. And then I'll also show you how to add on to your forms and then how to subtract from your forms to make things a little bit more complex. Okay, so to begin with our, what are we doing? Cone? No, we'll do a pyramid. We're doing a pyramid first. Okay, to, so to begin that, I'm going to draw two projection lines. And then I'm going to kind of create the bottom piece of that cube, right? So I'm just making this piece right here. And since we're doing a pyramid, we no longer have those one, two, three, four, five, six, six sides. Is that right? Yeah, six sides. <laughs> so we're going to just focus on this bottom plane. Okay. And then to find center, oops, do that. We're going to create an X from the top left corner to the bottom right corner and then top right corner to bottom left corner so you can see where that intersects is where the center of this shape is and then I'm going to draw a vertical line that it goes straight up okay so it's nice and vertical nice and straight and then I'm going to connect the top of that line down to the four corners of that plane like that and then we will do uh, yeah do this one a little bit thicker so you can see what this looks like that. Okay, 
so there is our pyramid in one point perspective. Again, you can simplify this into an opaque shape by just filling in or kind of outlining the front and the um, left side of this. Or if it's see-through, you would be highlighting all of those. So you'd see all four sides of this. Okay, so I'm going to do the same thing, but this time we're going to flip it so it's above the vanishing point. And that's just to help you see how they change, whether, you know, based off of whether they're above or below the vanishing point. So I'm going to put in my same little rectangular shape as before, like so, and then X to find center, like that. And then same thing, I'm going to go from center and then draw a vertical, nice straight line that goes above. And then I'm going to connect all of those corners to that top point. Okay. So again, I will outline this so it's easier to see. Let's see what we're doing here. Okay. So what you'll notice is that as this moves above the horizon line, we see the bottom of that pyramid. And as it moves below, we no longer see the bottom. Okay, so we're seeing more of the top side of this. Same thing will happen with squares. Anything that you move above the horizon line, you'll see the bottom of. Anything below the horizon line, you'll see the top of. So just keep that in mind. Um, you can also change the direction that these are facing, right? So you could flip them up, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> upside down. You could flip them on their sides. So I can show you that really quickly. Um, and the biggest thing is that you just learn kind of the basic principles of how to create these forms in one point perspective. And then once you understand how to make those forms, you can change them around and kind of move them. So we'll go back to this one here. And let's say I wanted to do this pyramid, but on its side, like it kind of fell over or tipped over in the wind. So what I'm going to do is think about drawing in kind of this side of my rectangle. So I want to draw that kind of plane. So I'll start with a vertical line Draw my projection lines to that vanishing point, and then draw in that vertical line. Okay, and I want to find center, so I'm just going to X, bing, bang, boom. There's my center point, and to make it look like it's tipped over, I'm going to draw this time a horizontal line that goes outward. And then same thing, I'm just connecting the top point of this to the corners. And you can see that as I connect these, we no longer see them. Okay, and I know this looks really weird, <laughs> kind of looks like a star. Um, I'll change the color here and make it a little bit thicker so it's easier. And again, this is why it can get really, really easy to lose what you're doing in one point perspective, which is why you have to pay close attention to what you're working on. Okay, so again, here's the bottom part of my pyramid. And then I've got the side part right here. And we'll just kind of pretend like this one's opaque again. It's like it fell over on its side. Okay, so it kind of went like this, whoop. And it fell over. <clears throat> okay, so that's our pyramid. I'll write a little note here. 
few rounded stuff. Okay. And then next we will move on to our cones. So these are going to be very similar to what we did with the pyramid. Except for this time, instead of having those four different sides, it's going to be rounded. Okay, so I'll do the same thing. We'll work on this side now. <clears throat> and to draw out my two projection lines. And then make sure that this is a vert, or sorry, horizontal line. So straight across. Horizontal line. Okay. So, and something to really always pay attention to is that you should only have diagonal lines that go back to the vanishing point. If you're drawing lines that do not go back to the vanishing point, they will always be either vertical or horizontal. Okay. So going back to this, I want to find center of my cone. And then just like before, draw in my Uh, vertical line and then I'm going to draw in a oval and this is kind of tricky for me to do in paint but essentially you want to think about that oval just sitting in between those um, those lines here Okay, so see how it's not really going to the corners at all, but we're trying to get it as close as possible. Okay, so then from here, I'm going to go to the outermost side, so the outermost left side. Oops, I don't want that anymore, not this one. And then I'll draw my line up to the top of that. Same thing on this side, like so. And then I will Make this larger in a different color so it's easier to see. Let's see if I can get this. That. And like this. Okay, so again, because this um, cone is above the horizon line, we're going to see the bottom of it, not the top of it. And I can do a couple of shady lines in here. Real good. Actually, you know what would be easier? Let's see if I just did this. So that would be the bottom, right? So it would be kind of darker. Actually, let me change that to that one. Okay, so that's what our um, cone will look like. Again, we can flip this upside down if we would like to. So same thing, you would draw out your side of it and then just draw it down. You can also draw it knocked over on its side. So just think about which one of these sides of your cube that you want to start your object on. Okay, and then next thing I want to show you is how to draw cylinders and again just kind of a quick review so we'll start off with kind of this kind of shape like that draw so it's just kind of a long rectangle that and draw that one back so this is kind of the more complex way to draw a cylinder this will really help for kind of more complex things to get it more accurate so again let's say I want to do a cylinder that's kind of laying down on its side so I'm going to Draw in my little ellipse shape, that circular shape. I'll do this one darker so it's easier to see. And then I'll draw in 
another one on the back here. And then just like the cone, you want to connect the outermost curve of that cylinder together, still following that projection line. So that would be the shape of our cone. Okay. Um, and I can color this one in too. So it's a little bit easier to see. Okay. Tricky on paint. We can, oops. Erase this little part here. And then do kind of the darker side. Oops. And there. Okay, so again, this would be the top little part of our cylinder and then the side of it and you can do the same thing if you want to make it easier on yourself you can essentially just draw in like a rectangular shape like this and just kind of curve it on the top and the bottom. Okay, so this bottom piece, I'll show you, would have a little curve on it, and the top one would have kind of a, a larger curve, kind of like that. Okay, so this would just be the kind of the quick and easy way of doing a cylinder. Or if you want to make it more accurate, you would definitely want to do it based off of the rectangle. So the last thing I want to show you, which is a little bit more difficult, is how to add or subtract onto different shapes. Okay, so again, I will start with my vanishing point right there. And then we're going to start with adding onto. Things. So let's say that we are starting with a cube. Oops. Let's really quickly draw this back here like that. And I'll keep this one opaque. Like so. Okay. And to make this a little bit easier to see, I'm going to kind of erase out the projection lines that we don't need anymore. Okay, and again, you want to make sure these lines are very light since you'll be using pencil. So you can make sure that you can, you'll erase all those construction lines. Okay, so I've got my cube drawn in perspective. And then let's say I want to add a, let's do like a pyramid on top. So I already have that bottom plane drawn out for me. So what I'll do is just do our little trick here, X define center. And I'll draw my horizontal, or sorry, my vertical line upwards. I'll make it really tall just for fun. And then I will connect those lines down like that. And again, I will erase those lines that I don't need anymore. I don't need these ones. Don't need this. And I don't need this one. So then I've got a nice little pyramid sitting on top of my cube. Almost kind of looks like a house. And you can do lots of other stuff from here. So maybe I wanted to have this rectangular 
thing coming out the side. Let me make these ones smaller. So I would just kind of decrease the size of this here. Like that. And we got my little rectangular, or sorry, my square starting position. And then I will extend these sides out. And I'll also connect this back to the vanishing point. Bring that one down. Bring that one over. Down. Okay, and then I'll erase the pieces that I don't need anymore. And I'll make this a little bit larger. So you can see where that connects. Okay. And one thing I want to point out, see how my projection line isn't super straight back to the vanishing point? Make sure that it is going back to the vanishing point. Because what I could do to show you is that if I follow this line, see how it reaches somewhere else that's not the vanishing point? That's going to make a lot of things look start to look wonky and inaccurate. So if you have lines that don't line up, just erase them. Use your ruler and make sure that they're going in the correct direction. Okay, so I'll redraw that, going back that way. That looks good. Boom. Okay, so that is adding on to forms. So adding on to forms. And then we can also do subtracting from forms. And this is where things can get a little bit more fun. You can get really creative with this. So I'll start with a smaller one. Um, maybe we'll just do another, let's do like a flat rectangular shape here. Ah, I always do that. <laughs> All right, and then I'll bring this back here. Again, connecting my corners back to the vanishing point those diagonal lines and then I will finish the sides here across like that okay so we've got our kind of flat rectangular shape and let's say I want to cut out a section here in the middle so if I want to make sure it's perfectly in the middle I can do that X to find center and then I'll just use that as a guide. So just making sure my lines are parallel with each other. See how these two are exactly the same. And I'll do the same thing over here. They should be parallel with each other. Drag this one across. It's parallel with the one on the bottom. And then drag this one up to meet that one. Okay, so there's my smaller square and then I'll erase the lines that I don't need anymore as best as I can okay, so let me outline this really quickly so it's easier to see So what I'm also going to do 
is change the color of this so you can kind of see that it is the bottom part of this rectangle. Get rid of those pesky little red lines. Okay, so we can see that there is some pieces missing here. So, and mainly we're missing this piece that would go across this way. So I can do another vertical line that goes here. I would have this corner that needs to move up. And then this piece that would oops, match up with that one there. So we've got kind of the, the back walls, if you will, of the shape. And then fill in this one. Re-outline this just so it's a little bit more clear. And then we need this one goes back there and that one. Okay, and then I just realized I want to get rid of this little piece right here. That's what's making it look weird. Go back and fill this in. Okay, so there is our rectangular form and we have kind of chopped out the center of it. Okay, versus adding on to things. And you can do a lot of different things, again, with adding on to or subtracting forms. Um, you could do bookshelves, door frames, windows, you know, picture frames, computers, chairs, lots of different things that you can create just by adding on to and, and subtracting from those shapes. Okay, and we'll just do subtracting from. Okay, so hopefully that helps. Sorry this is a little bit of a long one. Um, let me know if you need any help. Okay.